Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to a new episode of Canadian Investing in the U.S. Uh, This week, my guest is Larry Osmond. Uh, Larry, you want to start off by uh, giving everybody a bit of an intro to yourself? Uh, Larry Osmond. I'm. I live here in Ontario, in Oakville, Ontario. I'm actually a real estate broker here in Ontario, um, and I'm a property investor both here in Ontario, uh, in Florida, and for the last several years in Dominican Republic. Oh, you're, you're, I didn't realize you're in Florida too. That's awesome. Yeah, that's where I started. <laughs> well, maybe let's uh, let's do the story a little bit. Like, how did you get into Florida? How did you get into Dominican Republic? How did that sort of transpire? Uh, so I guess it was back in 2012, my wife and I were looking, we had some extra cash from paying off our mortgage and we're looking to do some investing with that money rather than stick it in the bank. And, uh, real estate in Ontario was starting to get out of hand, expensive, you know, a, a 1400 square foot townhouse in Oakville was running, you know, five, $600,000. And the rent on that was, you know, 1800, $2,000 a month. So the ROI just didn't add up for me. Um, I mean, take take into account that, yeah, there's going to be some growth. But back in 2012, we weren't seeing the growth of 2021. No. Um, so we decided, and I'm sorry, I had just gone on a business trip down to Florida with the company I was working for at the time and realized how cheap real estate was down there. So two weeks later, my wife and I jumped on a plane and flew down to Sarasota and spent five days driving around looking at properties and uh, picked out a bunch down there that we liked. Um, have brought down a cashier's check for the realtor in case we found something that we liked. Uh, we found one, we were a backup offer, didn't get it. And the second one, we, we, uh, liked our backup. We went in on and we're able to negotiate on that being cash buyers or cash buyers in their eyes anyways. Yep. And, uh, ended up getting our first property. So, and at the time the exchange rate was at par. So, I mean, we paid 228 us, uh, all in close. We were 225 Canadian. And we were getting eighteen hundred and fifty bucks a month in rent, uh, U.S. dollars. So when we looked at that compared to Canada, we were getting the same rent as we would have gotten in Oakville for half the investment. So that was really our first uh, dive into investment properties. We bought that property, and um, you know, here we are, ten almost eleven years later, own that, and it's tripled in price, and my rent has doubled, and you know, <laughs> it's been a success story from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. So how, how did you get into doing the Dominican Republic? You, you had to go on a vacation or something like that? Um, funny, funny thing is my wife and I used to vacation a lot. We used to go away. We both had um, very busy careers. So when vacation time rolled around, we were always on a plane somewhere warm. So we would travel two or three weeks a year uh, to usually Caribbean destinations. Yeah. And a, a local realtor at the time that I was kind of dealing with a little bit had just returned from the Dominican and told us he owned a property there. Oh. And... Um, Oh, I found that interesting. You know, we kind of got tired of the all-inclusive and resorts and cruises and all that stuff. So we said, like, you know, let's check it out. And I had never been to the Dominican for some reason. It just never, I just never had an interest. Yeah. Um, so never, I never went there. And then I heard about this. So again, my wife and I jumped on a plane and flew to the Dominican for a couple of days and checked out this community. And um, at the time, it was it all looked great. I mean, you're going to own a, a, a property in the Caribbean. Uh, rental incomes were off the charts, seventy percent occupancy. You know, you're going to pay it off in you know eight to ten years with your income. We got sold a bag of uh, a bag of magic beans, basically. <laughs> and it all looked great, and it sounded great. And even looking at the P and L statement of the guy, I was uh, you know I, I knew from here um, looked great. I mean, it was it was a no a no brainer. Um, so we went through the process, signed up with the builder and in April, that was in April of 2017 and we took possession, <laughs> actually we took possession during Hurricane Irma. We were down there for the hurricane. Oh, wonderful. Um, right. which was, you know, it was a funny experience in and of itself because we had never been in a hurricane before. We, we never had the TV on cause we were so busy getting our villa set up and I guess five or six days into our trip, we were down there for 10 days. We flipped the TV on and like, oh, my God, there's a hurricane. What? And we watched um, some of the things that had happened through some of the Caribbean islands. Um, uh, St. Martin, I mean, we've been there a dozen times, couldn't even recognize it. And all they were talking on the news was it was it was barreling towards Puerto Rico, but wasn't the island wasn't a big enough landmass to slow it down. So it was coming straight at Dominican. And we kind of panicked a little bit. All the locals like, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. 
And we found out after that the North Coast has never actually taken a direct hit. So I knew this from my research, but when you're standing there in the middle of it looking at it, it just, your brain just doesn't calculate. But actually one of the things that attracted us to buy on the North Coast versus the Porta Plata area amongst a million other things, but one thing is they had never taken a direct hit from, the hur- from a hurricane. And if you, you look at it, it's really because of the mountain range. They have the tallest mountain range in the Caribbean. It's at 11,000 feet. And hurricanes travel in a clockwise direction. And when those outer bands hit the mountains, they push off. That's why whenever you see hurricanes barrel through, usually Turks and Caicos get slammed because they're 180 miles north of the north coast of Dominican. It bounces off the mountains and barrels straight into Turks and Caicos, which is low-lying low land, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we took possession of it then. Um, the first year... A rentals oh, sorry to cut you off, but like, did, did you get the hurricane? <laughs> oh, we did. Sorry, it came through. Uh, it wasn't a hurricane. I'm I'm originally from Newfoundland, okay. so I grew up down there, north uh, North Atlantic winters on um, the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, yeah. This thing never held a candle. Now I wouldn't tell the locals that, but it was it was a non-event for me. It was like a windy day with okay. lots of rain. A um, couple of trees were uprooted. Some signs were knocked down around the town. Stuff like that. Um, some big surf things like that, but nothing, nothing that I, nothing that you see on the news. Not that kind of hurricane. Gotcha. Okay. It was a big storm, but it was way off. We got the outer bands of it. Okay. So, right. Sorry, I always wanted to. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, I was panicking because my insurance wasn't even in place yet. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we were moving into a new villa, and I'm like, oh my god, we don't even have insurance set up yet. <laughs> so um, again, you learn about that stuff after the fact too, but. Yeah, it was it was really a non-event from that side. Yeah, so maybe talk about that stuff a little bit. What's it like to to get insurance in the Dominican Republic and mortgages? Is, is that even a thing with to get mortgages? Um, hello, everybody. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that I created a new coaching program. I believe the new coaching program has way more value than any of the programs that have even existed in the past. What we've done is pre-recorded all the lessons so that you can work through it at your own pace, which is pretty cool. And then we're going to meet up on a regular basis to answer the questions, do a deal analysis, and actually spend our time together working on things instead of spending our time learning things. I think this will make a seamless transition to buying in the United States and will help you solve a lot of your problems. If this is of interest to you, go to glensutherland.com slash coaching. I hope to help you guys invest in the United States, and I hope we provide as much value as possible. Back to the podcast. So I've never mortgaged. We own we own several properties, you know, foreign properties, and I've never mortgaged in those countries just because um, I kind of like having the stability of of knowing what my income is, uh, or sorry, knowing what my payments are on on anything I have. So we usually go in with with a chunk of cash up front, mm-hmm. and then I like to convert it to Canadian, so I have the stability of knowing not having to deal with exchange rate. Uh, so we with the Dominican. So with Florida, we bought it. Um, just happened that the dollar was you know, at par or better actually to our favor. So that was a non-event. It actually worked out really well for us because look where the dollar is today. Yeah. Um, but in the Dominican, we paid about one. I bought my cash a bunch of different times and I you know, would go online and find people selling cash. So I ended up paying about a buck 26, I think, was my exchange rate when I bought. Um, so we ended up buying and financing here. We put a chunk of cash in. The builder financed 30% at 5.95%, and which was about 98000 I think, he financed for us. Um, and the reason we did that is because all this great income we're going to have, oh, we'll pay that off in two years. It'll be done. Yeah, no. Um, we ended up paying it out ourselves after three years just from our income from Florida. Um, so the builder held the financing for that? He time? held 30%. So he has different financing packages. Okay. Um, so he had a 70, 30, he finances 70, you put down 30 and it was at eight, nine, five, we did 30, 70. So we, we paid, or we financed 30 with him and paid 70, which was at five, nine, five. Now at the time, a bunch of people in our community were buying under this program called dream financing, where you put down 5% and your low interest rate and, um, they financed 95% of it. It ended up being a farce. It ended up, there was some company out of New York, they were pulling a scam. You had to pay a fee up front. So about 15 or 20 uh, buyers ended up getting burned on that program. So mm-hmm. I just as soon deal with it here in Canada where I know what I'm getting into. Um, so we've used our HELOC along the way to secure that. 
and well, just so the lender was the 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 lender for the construction company was out of Canada. No, the so the builder actually financed self financed. Okay. Um, for our community. Yeah. Okay. Um, he did it himself, but they had another program through a third party called Dream Financing, gotcha. which was out of New York. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So yeah, he and that ends up being a bust. So I mean, I wouldn't have touched it anyways, but. For those that did, that was the exact reason why I don't get into it. They got burned. So, if you uh, um, were to do a mortgage, is that even a thing for Canadians in Dominican? It is. So, Scotia Bank is actually there. So, they don't like you can't work through the process here and then transfer it there. You actually got to do your mortgage in the Dominican. It's a long process. Um, it takes you know four or five months to get your mortgage set up. You do have to go with quite a bit of cash. I think they'll mortgage up to fifty percent. Um, it's and then there's local banks. Like I have a local bank account down there with the Dominican bank um, where I have credit cards and debit cards and bank accounts and all that stuff uh, just to do my personal banking down there, uh, pay my contractors or, or any workers that do stuff for me. But um, yeah, you can get a mortgage down. It's just a longer process. Okay. And then um, like, are you long-term renting this? I assume it's an Airbnb or something like that. Yeah. We, so Originally, the builder ran a rental program, so it was a turnkey thing. So okay. we bought the villa, had it built, furnished it, and then he managed the whole thing. Uh, eventually, he got out of that part of the business, so they run the community, kind of like a HOA, but it's run by the builder. Yep. And then we hired a property management company. So over the last couple of years, a bunch of Canadians have moved down there. They've opened up some property management companies down there. Um, you would think dealing with fellow Canadians that things would be great and wonderful, but sometimes they're the biggest shysters, unfortunately. Wow. Uh, so we dealt with one. Uh, she's still in business down there, but I have no respect for her at all. They destroyed my villa. Uh, we moved over to another couple, and it really comes down to managing your, your you know, if you think it's a set it and forget it, you're going to be sorely disappointed. So the property manager I have now, it's a husband and wife. They moved down from Toronto with their two young daughters about four years ago now, I guess. Yep. Uh, started a property management company. Things are not perfect, but at least I can pick up the phone and call them or message them and say, listen, what's going on, this, that, everything else, and find out. Um, and they manage my property completely. So all the maintenance is done. Uh, they manage the Airbnb side of it and everything else. So I pay for the services that, that are done, and then I pay a commission on the rental side of it. Okay. And then are they uh, turning around and, like, long-term renting it? Those, those no, I'm, I'm exclusively short-term. Okay. Yeah. So I actually just had an offer last week from somebody to rent it for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought about it for half a second, but like, we like to use it ourselves, right? I mean, the whole purpose of buying this was obviously long-term to have more use of it, but, you know, a vacation. Now I go away for three weeks. It costs me a couple of plane tickets. That's it. You got to yeah. buy food whether you're here or there. So, oh, yeah. Um, you know, three weeks at a resort for, for three of us would cost 20 grand. Three weeks down there cost me two grand for a flight and 800 bucks for a rental car. Yeah. yeah. So, a little big bit. difference. Yeah. You get the, the perks of owning it. Um, Absolutely. So, that's why I don't long term rent it. I want to have access myself. Okay. No, no. It makes a lot of sense. Um, For the, uh, the, the contractor or the builder that was building this, like um, you, you mentioned that the, the lending thing was a bit of a scam out of new york how, how did you know that the contractor was any good well they've been uh so we built in a community called casa linda okay um there's there's good and bad with everybody i mean no matter where you go i mean i'm in real estate here in ontario and i hear good and bad stories all the time about builders and everything else so you take it with a grain of salt uh, if you go into it naive like we did in the beginning then you're bound to get disappointed but um, the builder's been around for about 30 years. The current owner of it, he bought in in 2006. So he's really the one who's grown the community where it is. Yep. Um, and again, I don't want to say they're perfect, but they're the lesser of evils, I guess. Um, so he was willing to finance it in-house. We knew, I mean, he owns the entire community. We're about 350 villas in there now. So yep. we knew he was he was solid there. His partner in the business is also, he was a Canadian builder years ago. So there was some depth there. Uh, very well connected from a political position there. So they have a uh, good standing in the community. And they were, they're actually one of the top employers in the region. So lots of good things on that end. The one big thing for me buying down there was who holds title. So 
when I, when we went to buy, I mean, we did a lot of shotgun stuff in the sense of jumping on a flight and going there and everything else, but I did do my due diligence. Um, you know, so we, we ultimately looked at Dominican, Costa Rica, Belize, Mexico, Cayman Islands and Turks and Caicos. They were the places that we looked at. Mm-hmm. Turks and Caicos and Grand Cayman and Grand Cayman were just way outside of our budget. I mean, you're a million bucks US just for land. Um, Mexico, too many cartels, man. I'm not yeah. whether they're where you go or not. I don't need them to get in that mess. Costa Rica, um, beautiful, but you know, there's there's pros and cons to Costa Rica as well. One, um, lots of things can kill you there. I'm not in the bugs and spiders and snakes. Um, so there's lots of things that can kill you there. Uh, it's it's one big ecological reserve. So half the year you can't even go on the beaches because of the turtles, uh, which, you know, that's great. Yeah. Belize, very difficult to get to, in my opinion. Like, it's not a quick trip. Um, and then with Dominican, stable democratic government, good workforce, largest population in the Caribbean, largest city in the Caribbean. Um, tourism is actually their number two industry. Agriculture is number one. Okay. So you have a stabil- uh, stable economy there. Um Lots of labor available. Uh, they're out dealing with some shortages now because they apparently sent everybody back to Haiti. But, um, you know, there, there are some challenges with everything. People ask about corruption. Well, you know what? Every country in the world's got corruption. we got it here in Canada, man. Yep. So you got to know what you're getting into. Uh, lots of people say, talk about safety. Um, so I'll ask, I'll ask people, are there streets in Toronto you wouldn't go to after dark? Uh, of course there is. Absolutely. Well, guess what? There's places in Dominican you shouldn't go after dark. But yeah. we've been going for six years. I rent a car every time. We get in the car and just go. I've driven all over the island. I get lost in the mountains. I do it all, and we've never had a problem. We go horseback riding back in the mountains. I've never had a problem. Um, is that to say that things don't happen? Of course things happen. But, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that if you want to go looking for trouble, you'll find you'll find it. All right? Um, the biggest thing is probably petty crime pickpockets and stuff like that but again be smart man it's no different than anything i was in rome in 2016 and everywhere i went they told us there you got to watch out for pickpockets so what makes dominican any different right yep. just be smart so um the other big thing was that they have you know a, a solid military there because people do bring up the issue of of haiti um haiti's not a bad country Haitians are not bad people. I have no issue with that. There's there's gangs in Haiti. You know, you hear in the news and everything else. Yeah. You know what? There's gangs in New York City. There's gangs in Toronto. So um, people that look at it from a very narrow perspective, they'll always find a reason not to do something. We look for reasons to do it. Um, so, you know, those were challenges that we looked at, and we we weighed the pros and cons and decided that it was worthwhile. Mind you, the community we're in is predominantly expats, so there's a there's a lot of Canadians there, there's a lot of Americans, a lot of Europeans. So um, the North Coast is a predominantly expat community, locals yep. and expats. It's not it's not uh, Punta Cana at all. Like it's not a tourism hub like Punta Cana. Just curious, uh, what are the price points in this? If someone was going to go buy something there, like what are you talking like just a ballpark sort of idea. So we have a four bed, four bath villa um, with a private pool on a ravine lot. We paid three twenty for the villa, yep. uh, about fifty grand, sixty grand to furnish it. Today it would be worth about five hundred. And that's Canadian or U.S. U.S. Okay. All right. And then um, condos can range depending what you want. Like we're about a kilometer and a half back from the beach. Um, that was on purpose. Um, again, I'm northeast. Atlantic and Newfoundland. I know what salt salt water does to everything. So um, we wanted to be a little bit back from the beach just because we don't want everything to be replaced every two years. Um, but condos can range you anywhere from 50,000 to a million, depending what you want. So you want oceanfront, you know, penthouse, it's a million bucks. You'll be 3,000 square feet with a wraparound balcony and you can hit the water with a stone. Um, if you want to be back in town somewhere, smaller two bedroom, you know, just small condo kind of thing, you can get it for 60, 70 grand. So it really depends what your budget is and what your what your lifestyle is and what you're looking for, right? And, and you being a realtor, is um, Dominican Republic one of the countries that uses an MLS service? Oh, no. It's the Wild West, man. <laughs> you get off the plane down there and you tell your taxi driver you're there to buy a house, he's a realtor. 
everybody's a realtor. Half the realtors down there are Canadians because they move down there to retire or move down there to get away from everything in Canada. And they're like, oh, my God, it's easy to sell real estate. And commissions there are 8 to 10%. So, but then how do you, like, so say you're in Canada and you wanted to go buy one of these. Like, how do you even know where to find? Just do, do some Googling, find a, someone who's claiming to be a realtor? You start, you start I mean... There's like Century 21 is down there, Remax is down there, companies like that. Um, I've had my experiences. My wife and I are, are always looking at more property to buy. Yeah. So I've dealt with some realtors there. Um, I tell them right up front, I'm a realtor. I'm a real realtor. I'm certified. Like I'm I'm not only a, a broker in Canada, I'm also an international realtor with NAR. So, um, you know, and these are people that are not licensed realtors. Now, I'll give some credit. There were realtors in Canada and moved down there. So they know the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's one of the problems when we bought down or the people that we dealt with in the beginning were very misleading. And, um, you know, I mean, they're driven by money. So you got to be careful who you're doing, dealing with, right? You need somebody that's going to be upfront and honest and tell you what's good, what's bad, what's not. Um, I started a post and I mean, that's where you found me. It was a post I did on TikTok yep. and the amount of people that reached out to me, and I'm like, I don't sell real estate in the Dominican. I have no interest in selling real estate in the Dominican. I'll connect you with good people because I've already gone through the process. There's nothing in it for me. Yep. I just, I went through a lot of turmoil in the beginning sorting this out. And if I can avoid that for some people, I will. Um, you know, so I've had a few chats with people along the way to point them in the right direction. I have some good people that I would recommend to work with. But beyond that, I mean, all I can tell people is do your due diligence, man know what you're getting into if it looks funny probably is it smells bad it probably is um and trust your gut don't just jump in you know willy-nilly hoping that things are going to be good because you get you get distracted there right i mean you're down there and you see the, the the turquoise waters and the palm trees and it's 30 degrees every day and you're in paradise and that becomes your focus and then all of a sudden you're into it and you're bought in and you forget about all the other little things. You forget about managing a property. You, for, you know, it's it's a tropical climate. Yeah. It's not like owning a home in Canada. I mean, think about here. If you locked your house up and went away for the winter and shut down everything, what would your house look like when you came back? Well, it's yeah. the same down there. If you walk away and lock everything up and leave it for six months, you'll come back to a fuzzy big ball of mold, right? Because it's a humid tropical climate. So, you know, you got to you gotta do your due diligence. You got to know what you're getting into. You got to work with people that you trust. Um, which is very difficult when you don't know anybody there, but finding the right people is, is so critical. And people, you know, my wife and I were probably a little bit knee jerk in how we did it in the beginning. Um, you know, which is not typical of us, but uh, we got a little hung up in the, you know, glitz and glamor of the Caribbean. Right. Um, if I were to do it all over again, I'd certainly be a little more, um, um, What's the word I'm looking for? I definitely do my homework a little deeper and I'll be a little more critical of the decisions we were making. I like that's fair. Uh, Larry, people wanted to track you down. They wanted to find your TikTok channel. They wanted to find you as a realtor for Oakville. Uh, where do you want, where do you want to direct these people? So my website, uh, which is under construction right now, but my website is LarryOsman.com. That'll take you to my Century 21 website for here in Oakville. Um, from there, you can connect with me through any means, uh, Facebook, TikTok, all of that. I have no idea what my handles are. Sorry, that's my marketing person does that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the easiest way is LarryOsman.com uh, or Google me. I'll come up if you Google me uh, through Century 21. Uh, it's about the easiest way to get a hold of me. I love it. Um, thank you for coming on the show. I'm excited. I'm uh yeah, it's starting to get warm, warmer here in Ontario, but uh, it's been a long winter, buddy. I'm telling you, my wife started a new job in January after 25 years, yeah. so she couldn't take vacation. This is the first March break we didn't go away in uh, 12 years. So, <laughs> and I have I've security cameras on my property all around the exterior of my property, so I'm, I'm always checking who's coming and going, and making sure my gardener and everybody's doing their job. And you know, it's thunderstorms and rain here right now, and it's 28 degrees and blue skies there. So <laughs> trust me, that hurts. <laughs> yeah, no, these, the, whenever I hear about these tropical places, I'm always like really interested. Um, it, it's going to come. You, you'll you watch uh, my social media. It'll show eventually that I bought one of these. Um, but Larry, thanks for it, coming on the show. Something that, you know what? Um, 
you do your work and, and you buy right, it's it's awesome, man. I mean, if you like the vacation, um, I have a lot of clients. My 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 client base is typically downsizers, baby boomers, things like that. So it's people that have been in their homes for 20, 30 years. They've got equity in their homes and they're downsizing. And the first thing they see when I go to do a presentation is my villa on my my back, uh, my wallpaper on my laptop. So that inherently, you know, brings questions about what's that? Where's that? Yeah. And um, the amount of people that I've talked to that said, how do you know, what does that cost? And when you think they sell a house here for $2 million and they downsize, they have enough money in between there. They can buy a place there. And, and it's so cheap to live there. Um, I have a friend. I sold his house in Oakville in December of 21. And they moved down. We closed April 28th and May 3rd. They boarded the flight and they're gone. They're almost a year there now. He lives two doors away from me down there. And I keep asking him, when are you coming back to Canada? It's like, well, I think we're going to come back for two weeks to see our grandson and our kids. But other than that, <laughs> it ain't happening, buddy. But that's interesting. Like, so if you wanted to live there permanently, there's no, there's no catch to that. Like, it's not like when you go to the U.S. where you had to stay under six, years, six, six months. Well, I mean, there's obviously, you know, from your, from your OHIP perspective and things like that, if you're going to be gone, you run yeah. a risk. Um, but things down, like people think, oh, it's the Dominican Republic. It's a third world country. You know, what about your health care? So my friend that's down there is in his early 60s. His health insurance, which covers everything, dental, eye care. I mean, you name it, it's covered. And I think he pays like $2,200 US a year. And the service is impeccable. Like you can get an MRI done in two hours. That's incredible. Um, and people think, oh, well, the, you know, the healthcare system is not very good. Then. Who told you that? They got phenomenal healthcare systems down there. They've got doctors that are trained in Cuba, which are some of the best doctors in the world. They've got doctors from Canada. They've got doctors from Europe. Um, dentists, like my, my buddy told me, he said, Larry, he said, I went to the dentist's office. He said, I've been going to the same dentist in Oakville for 30 years, and he's the best. He said, I walked into this dentist's office down there and saw technology I didn't know existed. He said, it was unbelievable and a fraction of the price. So, you know, I mean, the, the things that people think about are a problem are not a problem. They're a problem because someone along the way told you it was an issue, but it's not. So, you know, he just got his residency. You can get your residency down there, or you can't. Just pay the like. There's a penalty if you stay beyond 30 days, and it's peanuts, right? I mean, a couple thousand pesos if you stay for an extra six months, which is like 50 bucks. Whoop de do. Yeah. Um, you can buy your property. We bought ours under our own name as opposed to under a corporation, and there's tax implications both ways, right? If you buy it personally. Um, your property tax, you have an exemption part to it. I just paid my property tax bill for the years, $380 US on a half a million dollar villa. Yeah. Right. So if you buy it under a corporation, your property tax is 1% of the value of your property. So, you know, six of one half dozen or the other. Yeah. But, you know, when people look at it and they come up with all these excuses why you shouldn't do it or you can't do it or what's wrong with it, it's only because they heard it from other people. Go and listen to the people that actually live there and go through this. The amount of snowbirds that are heading down there, the cost of living is a fraction. You could live down there comfortably on $2,000 US a month, very comfortably. And that's everything, entertainment, food, transportation, taxes, everything. So how many people can live in Ontario today for $2,000 a month and live good? No, no. Right? So more and more people are looking at it, and they're looking at it from the perspective of quality of life, Right? Um, I can I can experience more. I can have more. I get the health benefits of everything down there. Um, I live in a tropical climate. All these all these are different things and things to do. I mean, we live on the north coast is where our place is. There's everything there. You got the mountains, the rivers, the the, the beaches, the ocean. You got everything. But if you're in Punta Cana, you got beach. It's the land of the flat, right? It's Americanized. It's hotel after hotel. It doesn't really work for me. It's not really what we want. North Coast, I mean, we get dune buggies and go up in the mountains for, for a day exploring. Or you go up and swim in the rivers or we go paddle boarding down at the beach or we go snorkeling every morning. There's so many things to do. You know, you're 45 minutes away from Santiago, which is, you know, a million plus people. So every service you want. Want to drive a Maserati? Go to Santiago and buy a Maserati. They got it all there. Mercedes, Prada, you know, all the brand names of everything. If you want it, it's there. It's, you know, it's people think it's a third world country. My like, God, no, no. It's like anywhere. Now, are everybody down there got money? No. I mean, labor down there for, for, for Dominicans is about $400 US a month or what service people make down there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's just absolutely huge gaps between um, income levels or, or lifestyle levels down there. But 
that's the way these countries work. And, you know, we, we employ people down there looking after our properties and stuff like that. And we provide good wages to people through our, our property managers. Like our property managers do an amazing job with, with the locals. I mean, they do Christmas things every year. They support their families, uh, school programs, things like that. So, you know, there's so many things you can do down there, both for yourself and for the community there to c- contribute. And if you think about it, we're the second largest industry in, the, in their country, right? So yeah. it's providing livelihoods for people. Love it. Cool. Larry, we might have to have you come back, but I, I, this was a great conversation. <laughs> I love it. Um, thank you for coming on the show. Um, Thanks for having me. Great value. Great value. I'm definitely going to have when people are like, hey, where should I invest outside of the U.S.? I'm like, you should listen to this episode with Larry Osmond about Dominican Republic because it, uh, I think it'll get you fired up. <laughs> it's Well, it's um, we're, we're going to buy more. I mean, my wife and I, our plan is eventually to make the property we own strictly a rental property, um, not a vacation home. And then we're going to build one. Um, now that we've been there and we know what we want and don't want, we believe our current property is more geared towards a, like a short-term situation mm-hmm. um, in the sense of like short-term stay situation. We want, we know what we want now. So we're probably going to build a new property in a couple of years and then we'll just, this one will be an investment property. Makes sense. All right, sir. Oh, thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. You know where to reach me. <laughs> <laughs>